Hey all you cool cats and kittens, it's Carol at Big Cat Rescue and I'm fixing to go out and see some of the work that the volunteers and staff have done today to get ready for the hurricane, but thought you might want to see what it looks like in our kitchen and living room. We've been bringing all of the chairs in from outside. I apologize if we don't have much of a signal here. <coughs> Just gotta find my shoes. It's been a busy, busy day, on top of being just an absolutely crazy day. Have you guys been watching the news? I mean, first off, we hear that a tiger escaped in Atlanta and went after a dog and ended up being shot and killed. And there's just no place around there that it seemed like that cat could have come from. And then we find out this afternoon that it's Feld Entertainment and they were driving a truckload of tigers from Florida to Tennessee and it escaped and nobody noticed? What kind of truck would you have to put a tiger in for it to be able to escape in the first place? That is just so bizarre. I, I can't even wrap my head around it. I think I'm like... I'm, I'm in some kind of weird nightmare. And then, of course, Hurricane Irma is a nightmare in and of itself. These are the people that are getting ready to do enrichment. And I thought all of those tigers from Feld had gone to Tiger Haven, like weeks ago, maybe even a couple of months ago. So why were there more tigers on the road? Because whenever we have the gate open for people to come to enrichment, we have to keep this gate locked. So any of you who are recovering from Hurricane Harvey, our hearts certainly go out to you. And I hope things are clearing up and cleaning up and people are getting reunited with their pets. Oh, for goodness sake. I can't do this one hand. Hang on. All right, I got it. <clears throat> well, apparently the people that had the cat escape drove on to Tennessee and didn't even know the cat was loose. So it, it's like, that was another three hour drive from Atlanta. I'm, I'm guessing they went to Kingston. <coughs> And nobody knew until the cat was loose on the interstate. One of the pictures that I saw of the tiger on the interstate, it was just terrifying. I, I can't even imagine what people driving must have thought. Or the woman having her dog attacked by the tiger. I, you just don't expect to have that happen in this country. And yet all over the place are these backyard breeders, and in this case, pretty well-known operation. It makes me even more glad that the circus is no longer using these cats in performing acts. You'll notice everything looks really calm and still and beautiful out here. Visit Florida just asked me if I would let them access our <laughs> if I would let them access our webcams for the hurricane. They're expecting to get some entertaining video from that, I guess. Hey, Priya. And then, in the news, right before I came out, was another story in Oklahoma. Guess who this probably is? 
about a tiger who was stolen. <laughs> And they just recovered the tiger and sent it back to its owner, whoever that was. And it's like, people are out there stealing tigers? For goodness sakes, what, has the whole world gone crazy? You get a tropical depression out there and we just all lose our minds? It's unbelievable. For the last two days, traffic in Tampa has been crazy. It doesn't matter which way you're going, there is just wall-to-wall -wall people out there driving and lining up for gas, blowing all of the gas that they have, sitting in line for gas. <clears throat> the stores, the shelves are just empty of the things that you would need in a hurricane, including plywood. Jamie and Victor went to try and get some plywood to cover up the windows for food prep. We had a big staff meeting today talking about all of the things that we need to do to prepare for the hurricane, and looks like You'll notice there's like nothing sitting around. <laughs> they really did a good job on that thing. And what we discovered in the staff meeting is that a lot of our mobile homes, I'd say probably half of our mobile homes are newer models, so they can withstand hurricane force winds. But the other half are not, and no telling whether or not they're going to be able to withstand those kinds of winds. So what we had to do is figure, okay, where's everybody going to go? And what we'll do at first, depending on the miles per hour of the winds, is move people from the old trailers to the newer trailers, which means a bunch of people are going to have, have to be shacking up with each other with all their cats. And I know one person has eight cats by themselves. You can imagine we have a bunch of cats. And so all of these cats have got to be accounted for, and we got to, or not accounted for, but uh, taken into consideration as far as like, how are they going to live for several days and how are we going to deal with litter boxes and they can't just stay in a paper or a carrier with pee pads under them. They're going to need some space to get out and get around and having to feed and water them and all of those kinds of things. And so we've worked all of that out as to where everybody's going. And then if the hurricane ends up being like a cat four, then everybody will pile into the gift shop. Well, if everybody piles it, because there's only two concrete buildings out here, the gift shop and food prep. I don't think we'll all fit in the gift shop with all those pets. So that's why Jamie and Victor were trying to get more plywood today to cover the windows of food prep so that, hey Apache, so that we can make sure all the pets come with us. Well, I'm just not seeing anybody out here. We had kind of a tough day as far as volunteers go because so many volunteers are staying home putting up plywood over their own windows. So what we decided to do to encourage more of our people to come out and help with the big cats during this upcoming week was to give them credit for time and a half hours. So hopefully that will encourage more people to sign up. I don't know what they're planning on doing with all that. Jamie said there was a load of sand that came in today so that we could make sandbags. We couldn't buy any sandbags anywhere because everywhere was either sold out or not shipping to Florida. I had several screenshots from that today that I was going to share of all the places I tried to buy sandbags that said that they were not shipping anymore to Florida because they were out. So uh, we could use garbage bags and fill those up with sand. I'm guessing the sand must be back at the back where all the vehicles are. We need to put those logs away. Yeah. Projectile if we don't. Can't believe with all the pickup they did today, they didn't do that. I don't know if they've done heads today or not. Let's stop by here and see. I had suggested yesterday that maybe Will and Divinity should go back outside because they're much, much safer in the enclosures that they have outside than they are in that tin shed of a recovery hospital but they're afraid that they just won't eat during that period of time at all so they're gonna have to stay in the hospital hello do you know if they've already done this yes they have yeah. you guys did a wonderful job cleaning up out there <laughs> all right I missed it well let's go find some cats then
<coughs> I'm sorry if you're not getting to your questions because I'm driving and I can't do both. <laughs> Seth, you're too cute. You're so funny up there. We'll come see you. I had to cancel my trip. I was planning on being in Minnesota. In fact, I was going to be leaving tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. But I don't want to leave the cats behind during that, no matter which way the storm goes. Whether it goes up the east coast or the west coast, it's still going to be just a ton of rain, I'm expecting. There's beautiful Seth. All right, now I can take some questions. Any questions that you've already posted here, please? If nobody's answered you yet, post them again and I'll try to get to them while I'm watching. Diane says she's in Disney World. Is that the one in California or the one in Florida? I can never remember which one's Disney World or Disneyland. I'm guessing Disney World is in Florida. Hey, Cindy Arthur. Hello, Christine. Teresa, we will do our best to stay safe. We've done everything we can to get ready for it. Are you going to hide up there from the storm? Are you hiding from Irma on top of your hill? Oh, sorry about that. Mosquito got me. Yeah, you're right. Irma is wider than Florida, so it doesn't matter which side she goes up, we're going to get hit. We are prepped. I can't say that we're ever really ready for such a thing. And somebody said they live a mile away. Sherry lives a mile away. Thank you. We will try to stay live and let you guys see how things are going. Of course, you can always check in on our live webcams. We have probably a dozen of them at bigcatrescue.org slash cams. And yes, Natalie, the cams will be on until we lose power. The cameras are not on the generator, so if we lose power, we're going to lose the cameras. The generator is only to protect our food source. We have, we can store 17,000 pounds of food for the cat and in one freezer and the other one probably about 5,000. So there's a generator that operates those freezers so that we don't lose any food. That would be really bad to have a bunch of hungry cats. Yeah, you can see that den right there is concrete. It's four inches of concrete and it's reinforced with rebar and then it's kind of like buried in the ground. Can't resist, can you? Just gotta do it. Just gotta do it. <laughs> yeah, you're a funny one. You got me. You got me. You won. Grace, I don't know why Amazon took down my Hurricane Irma shirt. Um, they said that it conflicted with their policies, and the only thing I can figure is because it said Hurricane Irma, expect a cat fight if you come to Tampa. So maybe it was because I had the word fight in there. That's the only thing I could figure because there's a lot of Hurricane Irma shirts on Amazon. I love Amazon because they make it easy to sell things for me not to have to pay staff to ship it out, but man, are they hard to work with. They'll send you these really vague emails saying, we took down your listing for a violation of XYZ, which is like a 30 page document. So you have no idea which thing in there they're talking about. So anyway, what I did was I created another listing and I put it up at catrescue.biz. So if you go to catrescue.biz and type in hurricane, you should find it. Or if you go to the uh, page again and refresh it at bigcatrescue.org slash Irma, then the new shirt is there. He is calm. People often ask us if the cats act differently whenever there's a storm. And it's been my experience that in the days that lead up to the storm, a lot of times they'll eat a lot more. And I think that must be nature's way of telling them, hey, <laughs> Things could be really bad here for a few days, so be sure and fill up.
in hurricanes in the past, we have found that our tigers just find them endlessly entertaining. They love watching the wind blow things around. The rest of the cats usually hunker down in their dens. Yeah, Laurel's absolutely right. We do not touch these cats. Two reasons, well, lots of reasons actually. Most important two reasons are, it's dangerous. If they get a hold of your hand, they can pull your whole arm off through that hole in the fence. And it's not because they're mean, they're just so powerful. They don't know their own strength and they could kill you just playing with you. And the other reason is that these cats don't belong in cages. And we do everything we can to educate people about the fact that they don't belong in cages. You shouldn't be breeding them to take their cubs away and pet them. You shouldn't be breeding them for life in prison. And if we're going around petting them and acting all lovey-dovey with them, that just makes people want to go out and do the same thing. So it's, it's causing a horrible, horrible life for these animals whenever somebody posts pictures of themselves touching one. So of course we're never going to do that. <laughs> Max, you look pretty chilled out. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm just so relaxed. Until those ducks are in. I'm going to have me some ducks. Christina, I'm sorry to hear that you're buffering. Are other people having that same problem? I really believe that the people who pay to pet cubs most of the time are people who just love big cats and they have no idea that they're being lied to. They, they don't know that it's an entire industry that is is built on the fact that people don't know what happens to those animals behind closed doors. If they did, they would never pay to touch those animals. So don't feel bad if you got sucked into it because the people that do it are amazingly good con artists. Oh, thank you for posting Max's link. Max lives in here with Mary Ann. I don't see Mary Ann, but everywhere that you see cats living together, they're all fixed because we don't believe any cat should be bred for life in a cage. Yeah, I hear a lot of people asking about their dens. So there's another example of a den. That concrete that you see, it's a, inside there. It's eight feet by 12 feet and two and a half feet tall. I think the tigers are like three feet tall maybe, maybe a little bit more. Um, it's four inches of concrete that is reinforced with rebar. And then over the top of it, we've mixed concrete to make it look more natural like a rock. Um, actually, from where I am right here, you can see all the way across the lake that's what those dens look like so those are we made a wall out of them because they're eight feet high so you can see if you were to just push that over it would be like um, we call it a U an upside down U and they're eight feet in one direction and 12 feet in the other direction so it's like an eight foot by 12 foot room a lot of bedrooms of your houses are probably about that size that the cat has just for their den. <laughs> it's just the den part of his enclosure. He's got three big open air sections, or not open, but uh, three big sections. And then two of those concrete style dens. And then they got a bunch of the little plastic uh, tree stump dens. This is the other side of that den. 
and it's so strong that we were able to put a whole pond on top of it and a waterfall and then same thing over here so that big concrete structure underneath is eight feet by 12 feet and then two and a half feet high and it has a hole in it just like you saw on the other side for the cats to get in and use it as a den so the cats have plenty of safe spaces to go And even these, um, even these tree stump dens, these were just put in recently, but most of our dens have been in the cages for so long that they're kind of like anchored. <coughs> Excuse me, by all the roots and everything. This den has a little opening on this side, and then also you can see there through there a minute ago. Back there, you can see all the way through the den to the other side. Hi! Oh, we came back here specifically because of those two, Lovey and Thurston. They were being so cute yesterday, and I was hoping to catch them snuggled up again today, but no luck this time. There's Tiger Lily, and you just saw her come in from the, well, you may not have seen her, but she came through that guillotine door back there. So she's got the little tree stump den here in the front, and then that whole hill behind her is one of those underground dens. Hey, old gal. You sure are looking good now that they got all your mats off. Yeah. This little dog, she was born in 1993. You've seen some hurricanes in your time, haven't you, girlfriend? Yes, the lake is downhill, and the lake has been um, way down its bank. It's probably a good seven or eight feet from the top of the bank because we had two years of really poor rain. Not nearly as much rain as we usually have, so there's plenty of space for rain to go. And one of the things Jamie and Victor worked on today was making sure all of our generators are operational and that we have fuel. They actually started doing that a couple days ago, making sure they have fuel for all of them. <clears throat> and what we can do with those generators is they have fire hoses hooked to them so we can move water. <laughs> and with all, <laughs> well, you guys probably, unless you've been here, you wouldn't see it. But next door, they're building a hotel, and they built this thing up so high. Pardon me while I spray myself down. That mosquito guy was here yesterday, too. I don't know what's up with these mosquitoes. Nothing kills them. <coughs> well, <coughs> spraying that my face is not a good idea. They're building this hotel next door, and it's, I just know that because of the elevation they have put this thing at, when it rains, it is just going to come down through here like Niagara Falls, and so I wanted to make sure that we were going to be able to move all of that water past the gift shop instead of through it out to the lake. Pose myself down to the point of gagging and the mosquito spinning. Sandari, get the sleeping up there. Riza, will you talk to me? Rat? 
Are you ready for the hurricane? Y'all ready? Yeah. You're such a good girl. Barbara, we have no control over what our neighbors do with their property. Whenever there are zoning hearings for those kinds of things, we always go and we make sure that whoever's building, whatever they're building, knows that there's 70 big cats living over here and we don't want somebody to build some <laughs> some residential neighborhood and then start complaining that there's cats in the neighborhood because there's just no way we could move this many cats. We hope to actually fix the problem <laughs> so that these cats will die of old age here and never have to be moved again. And we can all solve that problem together, especially with all the craziness going on out there with Feld Entertainment losing a tiger in Atlanta and not even knowing it was missing, and then somebody else stealing a tiger in Oklahoma <laughs> with all of that going on, and the hurricane coming through Florida after hitting Texas, Texas being another stronghold for bunch of crazy people that keep tigers in their backyards. Surely we can raise enough awareness with our legislators to get this bill passed. When people are dealing with hurricanes, they shouldn't have to be worrying about what's going to happen if a bunch of cats get loose. Ernie, I heard that too. Deb, I agree. People have just lost their mind. Jay, I think you might be in the minority of people who want to live next door to lions. Probably several of you on this feed would like that, <laughs> but I don't think that's the American dream. <clears throat> Yeah, if they could relocate the hurricanes out west, they could take care of those forest fires. Well, the cats all look pretty relaxed. Somebody's sleeping. It could be a worldwide thing. Worldwide thing. There's no shortage of people who want to show off with big cats. Here's Hoover sleeping up on top of his platform. He's not too worried yet. That or they're all getting rested up. Not much going on out here. <laughs> Cynthia wants to live by him too. chasing each other. What are you guys doing? In a tiger cage, no less. You know she's right behind you, right? In that den. Are you watching the squirrels over there? Are they fun? The squirrel's fun. I see one on top and one underneath. This looks like deja vu from yesterday. Yeah. Uh, whoever that was that just asked if we're going to be safe from the storm, there's no guarantee of that. But we're doing everything that we can. She's in her concrete den. The tigers have higher ones, as you can see, it's higher inside for them than what the bobcats have.
Well, thank you for sending all the love and hugs. Katie, I don't know how far. I remember back years ago when that tsunami hit, it wasn't the one from Japan that I'm thinking about. I'm not sure, was it the Philippines where there was such devastation? But they were saying that before anybody had any idea that there was an issue, the animals were all running for high ground. Julie, I don't know if we got our water delivery. I know that they were really hounding the people at Zephyr Hills Water and um, our fuel company to bring us both, but I don't know if they did. The good news is, even if they didn't, we use those big Zephyr, I don't know if you guys even know what Zephyr Hills water is, but here in Florida there's a spring in Zephyr Hills and I guess the water is probably sold all over the country. So we use those great big jugs of it in water dispensers all over the property. Even though our water is drinkable, it's <clears throat> well water, which makes it smell like rotten eggs. It doesn't, there's nothing wrong with the taste, I mean, well, it doesn't taste so great either, but there's nothing wrong with it. It won't hurt you. And it goes through water purifiers and it's really deep well. So, I mean, our water is perfectly good to drink. So, the plan was at the staff meeting today, if the water delivery did not come, what we would do is take all the empties and fill them up with well water so that we have water. It just won't be our favorite water. And because we have generators, are you eating grass? Because we have generators, we'll be able to continue to get well water for the cats, which is what they currently drink. They do not get bottled water. Our snow leopards and our sand cats used to get bottled water. Tapu is just sleeping over there. Feeling like you want to vomit? Is that what you're doing? Eating some grass so you can throw up? <coughs> Still taste that bug spray. Yeah, the snow leopard's been gone for a long time. Go to bigcatrescue.org slash Hercules or slash Cleo or slash Zoe. Those were the three snow leopards. Christine is right, we do no breeding here. In fact, you can find out all the reasons why that would be a really terrible thing to do to any captive cat at bigcatrescue.org slash breeding kills. Slash breeding kills. Jay, I'm so sorry to hear about the wildfires out there. I was talking to somebody today about how, you know, if you have to pick, I'd rather have hurricanes than wildfires any day. Grace, the water they're pulling up out of the wells right now is being pulled before there's any flooding, so there's no problem with the water that we're stockpiling. And I don't 
think that it could even flood um, to the point here that it would affect our our wells for the cat's drinking purposes. <clears throat> if you, it's kind of hard to get a sense of height, but <clears throat> maybe at this angle you can see. See how the high ridge there where the trees, you see my hand down here? <laughs> These trees right here, right at the edge of the trees, that's the high point of the lake. So you can see that it drops down quite a ways. And then, hello ducky. Uh, if you look at the other side of the lake, see how much ground there is between the water and little Mary Ann's butt over there. <laughs> so right at the top of that is where the water has been before at the top of the lake. I don't like it when it gets that high. It's actually gone above the top of the lake in years past, back in the 90s. <clears throat> but um, we got that much flooding we could take on here <laughs> from everything around us and still be okay with this storm. And that's over 18 acres. So there's 18 acres of capacity, 18 acres by about three feet high maybe, easily three feet high. Maybe more than that, maybe seven or eight. <coughs> Somebody who is a math whiz can tell me how many cubic feet of water that is. And since the lake is the lowest point on the property, the water will eventually get there, even if it, you know, it's going to pool up, of course, it pool up everywhere, but it'll soak down through the sand into the lowest spot it can find. I don't know, is that Arthur or Andre? I can't see your, your ears. Are you all prepared? I'm prepared. Call me when the storm's over. <clears throat> Lauren, it's been, in the past, it's been our practice that <laughs> when the winds were at their worst, we were out here lashing ourselves to trees and pulling ourselves from tree to tree to make sure that none of the cages were being compromised and the cats weren't escaping or getting hurt. <laughs> You're right, Jay, that's why I didn't stay over there. There's Joseph up on his platform. Way back there. Nope, we don't have any more sand cats. Jeannie was the last of our sand cats and she's been gone a while. You can go to bigcatrescue.org slash Jeannie to see how long ago that was. All right, well, thank you everybody. I certainly appreciate all of your concern and all of your prayers. And, um, oh, you know what I got today? I got an email from Facebook saying that they they send every two weeks they send us money from the people who did birthdays or fundraisers for us. If you've seen those things on Facebook where it says you can fundraise for your favorite charity. And that number, I was supposed to be given a presentation this <laughs> um, Friday, but I had to cancel that. And that number I was looking at had started out, I think two years ago at like $491 a quarter and the last couple of them had been like $6,200 for two weeks and then $10,000 for two weeks and the report came in today and it covered a period of two weeks for like the first two weeks of August so they always run a little bit behind. First two weeks of August you guys raised $12,000 
So that's a combination of people doing birthdays or anniversaries or fundraisers for Big Cat Rescue. And also the, <clears throat> you may remember for a while, we had a donate button, <laughs> which I can't seem to find anymore. And so that was raising a good deal of money. And then of course, sometimes on our posts, we'll put a donate button and people donate that way. So we don't get a breakdown from Facebook, um, but we get this lump sum check. And they send us a thing that'll show us like by the day, you have to, it's a ridiculous report that you have to pull down in an Excel sheet. And they only put one day's worth of information in the Excel sheet. I don't know why they can't just put it all in one. But anyway, <clears throat> tracking it is really difficult. Luana does a great job of following up with people who are doing fundraisers when she knows about it to be sure and thank them. So I want to take a chance right now to thank all of you who did that because $12,000 for two weeks, that is amazing. Absolutely amazing. I really, really, really appreciate it. Oops, somebody had a figure for the... Uh, we can take a million gallons of water <laughs> with a three-foot rise. All right, well, I, I kind of doubt that... Well, I don't know. I don't know how many gallons of water a hurricane can dump. I don't know if anybody's ever calculated that by square footage of the land that it falls on. But thank you for doing that. And thank all of you. I thank all of you for sharing and liking and letting people know that these cats deserve to be free and that everybody can help us do that at bigcatact.com. Really appreciate that you guys are always quick to share that link and to be making that call every week to ask your legislator to support the Big Cat Public Safety Act. I really appreciate that. So I see there's 354 people here. I'm going to sign off. I'd like to run an ad if you guys don't mind. I need 200 of you to stay until it's done if you don't mind. That'll help support the cats. Of course, those ads show up in the money that we get every two weeks. Well, that's got to be a record. I lost less than 20 of you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And it kept me above the 200 limit, so we'll get the money for the ad. And the cats will get that in the form of food and vet care and safe dens to ride out the hurricanes. Thank you, everybody. I really, really appreciate it. It's over, Diana. It's done. Joseph, I wish you could see these hearts, son. You would love it. You'd love it. <laughs> Kathy Chambers, I know you're going to make that call because you make that call all the time. <laughs> and I really, really appreciate it. Oh, um, and if you make that call, every day we pull a winner. Luana usually posts it on the Facebook, uh, or Facebook, on the um, daily updates at bigcatrescue.org. So I don't know if she's up to date on that, but... Every week we pull a winner. Ooh, can you see this? Am I too far away? Uh, I've got it zoomed out. Big Cat Rescue and our logo. It's a wristband. So we pull a winner from the people who have made the call of the wild. So making that call, make sure that you're in that pool to maybe get selected as our winner. Yeah, you won't see the ad if you have an ad blocker. I don't think it matters, though, for as far as, um, well, I don't know. I don't know if it matters or not as to whether or not we get paid for the number of people that see it, because I don't get a breakdown, so I just don't know. Gene, I'm sure he will do fine in the storm. Lions really, really, really hate the rain, so he will go into his concrete den. He's got a choice of two. He can go in that one, or he can go in the really high one over here. He likes that one too. All right. Well, keep an eye on our webcams. You'll know when she's here because the trees will all be bent over at a 45 degree angle. Good night, everyone. <laughs>